This is Ambition Today. Today, we are joined by Peter Shankman. He's the founder at Shank Minds Business Masterminds and host of the Faster Than Normal podcast. You may also know him from his company, A Harrow, or Help a Reporter Out. This is the story of human ambition. These are the entrepreneurs, creators, investors, and builders who ambitiously change to the world. Explore the hardships and heroisms of everyday life while we reveal the key moments to leave behind a lasting legacy. This is Ambition Today with Kevin Siskar. What's up, world? I am Kevin Siskar, and you are listening to Ambition Today. Make sure you subscribe to our website, siskar.co, to make sure you never miss the latest Ambition Today episodes. Such as our last episode when we talked to Sean Ellis, the author of Hacking Growth and CEO of Growth Hackers. But today we are joined by Peter Shankman from the Shank Minds Business Masterminds and host of the Faster Than Normal podcast. He's also the founder of Harrow or Help a Reporter Out. Peter, welcome to Ambition Today. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's get started at the bottom and we can, we can go up from there. Uh, where are you from uh, and are there any influences from your early years that kind of stick with you today? So born and raised in Manhattan, I'm a New York City public school kid, uh, very proud of that moment. I uh, went to high school performing arts, um, Boston University graduate, uh, graduate school in Santa Barbara, California with 18 credits to go, lost my financial aid. Government sent me a letter that said your parents make too much money, we're taking away your financial aid. I sent the government back a letter that said they do make too much money, but they keep it. Government didn't find that funny. <laughs> That's moved pretty- back to New York. <clears throat> was hanging out in the Melrose Place TV gossip chat room on America Online back in the mid-90s. Someone in that chat room said, my company's trying to build a newsroom. Why don't you submit your resume? Two weeks later, I was moving down to Virginia to become the founding editor of AOL News. So I launched the AOL Newsroom back when AOL was the internet. And it was pretty amazing. I had a really great time doing that. So about three years there. I uh, left AOL in um, 97, moved back to New York. I uh, took a job for about two weeks with someone and realized that I did not uh, have any desire to work for anyone. And uh, from there, I uh, started to go um, on my own, figured I would start a PR firm, see how that did. And when it failed, I would get a job. Well, I've had three companies, all that have had successful exits, and I haven't had to get a job. It's about 20 years. So I consider myself pretty lucky. That's awesome. What was what was growing up in New York City like? I, I grew up in Buffalo. Uh, but I feel like New York City is one of the most unique places to grow up, uh, especially as a kid. Uh, were you jumping in the subway system, uh, graffiti? Like, what, what, what was what was New York City life like? <laughs> it was pretty awesome for me. Uh, I mean, growing up in New York City was 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 killer because um, you know we were just in this amazing world where it's like, uh, oh, it's Saturday afternoon, I have nothing to do. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's go see a Broadway show, you know. And people in the real world outside of New York City can't do that. And so we really enjoyed that. Um, had a great time with. Uh, with, um, you know, going to Central Park and, and just exploring the city. And you became a lot more street smart and street savvy and wiser uh, a lot earlier um, in time than you did um, in, in other sort of uh, other places you might have lived. I remember getting to college and being um, uh, much, much uh, uh, sort of, I guess, I guess, more street smart than, than most of my friends. And so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's got to be a huge advantage, especially as you enter uh, enter the world, the real world. Um, so you went to college, you went to America Online uh, in its heyday. Uh, I mean, America Online was growing like, like like weeds back then. I believe at that time they were the world's largest producer of CDs. Uh, <laughs> I read, Among other things, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, well, yeah, yeah, of course, America Online itself. But, uh, you know, what was it like being uh, at a company growing that fast so young? What did what was some it of your key takeaways? I learned so many amazing things um, in that three years that I was there. Ted Leonotis and Steve Case were my mentors, and I am just so fortunate that I had them to learn from. Um, I learned, uh, you know, uh, that was my first foray into the world of customer ex- experience and customer service, and those are lessons that have stayed stayed with me today, uh, very much so. So, very, very much a um, a, uh, a blessing that I managed to take that job and get it when I did. Yeah, that's that's amazing that especially that you got to spend so much time with Steve Case. And that's actually a pattern I've seen on the show is so many entrepreneurs uh were close in proximity to other great entrepreneurs and uh, and how that transcends, you know, the lessons transcend to, to future generations. That's amazing. Um, no about it. So so quick tangent while we're on the media topic talking about, you know, founding the newsroom at AOL. Uh 
What, what do you think is happening in the world of news today? Uh, and do you do you think it's broken? Do you have any ideas on how to make it better? I think it's definitely changing. I think that um, you know the concept that anyone can be a journalist is kind of messed up because not everyone can be a journalist. Most people suck. Um, you need real journalism experience to be a real journalist. That being said, it's not going to stop anytime soon. So, you know, the best thing that uh, that news agencies and news companies can do is is um, sort of create. Uh, more of an experience around that. Understand that it, it it is changing, and they need to adapt with that. All right. Um, yeah, it, it feels like there's there's a real need for accountability somehow to be injected into the ecosystem and to to keep it truer to to true journalism. No question about it. So so then you started Air Introductions. Uh, what what was that? Uh, it was acquired by a private equity company in two thousand seven. Uh, Air Introductions was a company that let you choose your seatmate before you get on the airplane. And uh, it was a great way to sort of find people who either wouldn't talk to you or might be interested in hanging out with you. And the lesson I learned there is that it's great to have an idea, but if you're not, if the timing doesn't work, you're going to fail. I was way too ahead of the game. And I did it today. I simply would have backed it up into Facebook and uh, Expedia. Back then, that didn't exist. So it was, you you were making members do way too much for a little payout. So that was a very valuable lesson to learn. Uh, that being said, it was acquired, and uh, the company who bought it, you know, they tried to do the same thing and ran it into the ground. But it was a good, uh, it was a good lesson. Nice. And so you parlayed that experience forward into Help a Reporter Out. For those listening that don't know, what what is Help a Reporter Out, and uh, can you tell me kind of the story of how it came to be? I have massive ADHD to the point where I run the number one podcast on iTunes for ADHD called Faster Than Normal and have a book coming out uh, called Faster Than Normal, uh, which is being published by Random House, all about the concept that ADHD is a gift, not a curse. One of the things about ADHD is that you're naturally curious. You wind up talking to everyone. If you're on an airplane next to me, I'm, unless you fake your own death, I'm going to know everything about you before we land. <laughs> and one of the things about that is that I just have a ridiculously large Rolodex. So journalists would talk to me all the time and they'd say, you know, hey, I'm doing a story on whoever. Who do you know? And so over time, I wound up learning a lot of um, uh, finding a lot of people, meeting a lot of people and would help a lot of journalists. That partly into journalists calling me and saying I'm doing a story on whatever. And so I said, there's going to be a better way to do this. I launched a Facebook page that became a mailing list. The mailing list became 300,000 people strong in under a year and a half, uh, receiving three emails a day with a 79 percent open rate per email. Um, which allowed me to post a small text ad in the top of each email. Those emails had queries, like 75 queries from media in every single email. Um, if you could answer the queries, you replied directly to the journalist, you got put in the paper uh, or the TV or whatever. It was a, I got very lucky. It was a great system. It worked very, very well. It was acquired uh, by what is now PR Newswire and uh, uh, about three years after I started it. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I read somewhere that you grew it to you know, 1.5 million while, while still working from home, which is... Uh, amazing uh, and and almost a little bit ahead of the time. Now now it seems more and more people are building lifestyle businesses like that. Um, but that's amazing. You were able to do that ahead of the time, and it still works. I actually have portfolio companies that use it uh, to this day, and uh, they've been getting some serious press out of putting the work into Harrow. So that that's amazing. Love hearing that. Um, so uh, so what so what was the end result with Helper Reporter out? So it got acquired. You sold it. Uh, worked there for a bit. Um, what, what was next? Uh, Help Reporter was acquired. I, I uh, made my earn out with them, and then I walked away. Uh, my goal was to take a uh, a, uh, a year off. That lasted about a week. I got bored, and so um, I consult now. I do tons of uh, consulting. I do tons of corporate speaking. I'm focusing really heavily right now on, on this ADHD lifestyle. Um, uh, like I said, with the book launching and things like that. So having a lot of fun and, uh, you know, in a very fortunate position where I can still work and bust my ass and do everything I want and um, enjoy myself. So after the break, I want to talk a, a, lo- I want to talk a lot about Faster Than Normal uh, and your podcast and the new book. Um, before we jump in, into the break, tell me a little bit about Shank Minds and, and some of that consulting and advising. And you do some angel investing as well, correct? Yeah, Shank Minds is a um, a mastermind that has about 200 people in it right now. It's for entrepreneurs anywhere from one to four years in, um, and we help each other out. We provide accountability. Uh, we do even we even wake each other up to make sure we all go work out. So we're good people. And um, it's at ShankMinds.com. It's in almost entirely um, uh, virtual and a really good group of people. So I'm, I'm in love every single one of them. Um, and then yeah, I'm an angel investor as well in uh, in uh, about several uh, seven or eight different companies around the world. All right. Awesome. Well, we're going to take a quick, uh, quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with Peter Shankman uh, talking about Faster Than Normal and ADHD right after this. This is Ambition Today. 
If you enjoy the show, then please leave a review in the iTunes store. If you don't know how to do that, you can just visit siskar.co slash review, and you can leave your review in three quick steps. Thank you so much for the help. And Ambition Today is happy to partner with WeWork, a co-working space that lets you do what you love. They have offices in over 140 locations worldwide. Many of our own portfolio companies use WeWork for their early stage startups, and they can work with everything from one-person offices to full teams. So visit siskar.co slash WeWork to learn more today. And Founder Institute, the world's premier launch stage accelerator. The Founder Institute has graduated over 2,500 technology companies across six continents and has learned a lot from doing that. We've used that data to compile the best personality traits of successful founders, such as fluid intelligence, openness, conscientiousness, and more. And if you think you might fit that entrepreneurial DNA, find out. You can apply at fi.co slash join slash ambition to take the test and see how you do. Lastly, Top Tall. If you are looking for software developers to help you build your next product, then visit toptall.com slash ambition today for a free two-week trial with the top 3% of software developers and designers. You own all the work, you keep all the code from anything built during your trial. That's T-O-P-T-A-L dot com slash ambition today to get started today. And now back to this episode of Ambition Today. Visit Ambition Today online at siskard.co and follow the show on social media at Ambition Today. Welcome back. We are here with Peter Shankman. Uh, we were talking about Harrow, his company, Help a Reporter Out Before the Break and, and its exit. Uh, and since then, Peter has been working uh, on a new book and a new podcast called Faster Than Normal. Uh, so I would like to, I'd like to jump into that a little bit, Peter. What is faster than normal? Uh, you mentioned before you've lived with ADHD. How did you come to this, to, to spreading this message and, and building this? So my belief is that ADHD is actually a gift, not a curse. And if you know how to use it to your advantage, you're actually doing pretty well. Um, having a faster brain is great if you have the ability to handle it. If you don't have the ability to handle it, it's like someone giving you a Lamborghini when you're used to driving a Honda. If you don't understand how to drive that Lamborghini, you're going to crash into a tree. And so for me, I am a big fan of using that brain to the best of my ability. To do that, I have to live my life by certain life rules because I understand that ADHD, as fast as I'm going, could throw me off the rails in about two and a half seconds, right? I could, um, you know, if I don't, if I do the wrong thing, if I don't uh, do things that I'm supposed to do, uh, it won't end well. Right. So I'm very aware of how I have to live, how I have to be. Um, these life rules that I put into place for me allow me to function at the highest possible output um, all the time. And so in doing that, I realized that there have to be other CEOs, other um, entrepreneurs, people like that who do the same thing. And so I am uh, I started this podcast called Faster Than Normal with the premise that we'd interview people who are sort of in the same boat. And uh, what wound up happening is that it turns out there are a lot of people in the same boat, very similar. Um, you know, I, I, uh, um, we've had Tony Robbins on the podcast. We've had Seth Godin. We've had Cameron Harold, uh, Scott Jordan, um, Dave Nealman of JetBlue, all these people who uh, understand that the premise behind um, uh, ADHD means that your, your brain is always moving faster and you can do incredible things. As long as you have that ability to function um, the right way. So for me, you know, things like I quit drinking, right? I don't drink anymore because I just like everything else, I drink really fast and I wouldn't have just one drink, <laughs> you know? Uh, it's like eating what they call um, uh, this, this thing called leftover pizza where people apparently order pizza, they have two slices, they put the rest in the fridge and they, they, uh, they have it the next day, leftover pizza. I don't know what leftover, I've never had leftover pizza. That's not a thing. <laughs> right. If I order a pizza, I eat the whole pizza. So Same for here. me, it's very much about uh, being aware of having uh, having this faster brain and then making the right decisions all the time to use that faster brain to my advantage. You know, so I won't um, like I said, quit drinking. I, I, get, I have to I have to exercise every morning. And sometimes that involves getting up as early as 3 a.m. to get it done before my day starts. And I have to do it because if I don't do it, I have a. Uh, a bad day, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. that's that's all it really it really comes out as. I need to be aware. I need to be careful, and I need to make sure that I am um, uh, doing the right thing. Yeah, well, I think this is. I think this. I think this lesson is great. Uh, and I and I, I checked out a few episodes of Faster Than Normal, and it's it's excellent. Everyone should check it out. 
I really like the mission about it because um, because I, I think you said in one of your episodes, you know, for some people there there is a stigma around this, and it can be life or death to to know to just come to terms and be cool with it. Um, and the fact that you spread that message and you show people, I believe I listened to the, the JetBlue episode with the founder mm-hmm. of JetBlue. It's amazing uh, to hear people that are, you know, su- such successes and how they turned it to their advantage. Um, so, you know, I, I think, and one of the things that I think is interesting is about kind of almost how this parlays in entrepreneurship, right? Building processes into your life is really important to be a good entrepreneur. And it sounds like, you know, living with ADHD almost forces you into that mindset, which is very similar to, to being a good entrepreneur. How do you see, you know, you've sold three companies. How do you see them overlap uh, throughout your life? Well, the, the mindset that makes for a good entrepreneur is great, but it's also the mindset that can kill you. You know, I, I joke that on any given day, I'm three bad, decisions, three bad decisions in a row away from being a junkie in the streets. And that sounds, you know, dramatic, but it's actually really true. Um, I don't, I've never had a problem with drugs, thank God. But, you know, I also know that... It's, you know, what starts with a couple of drinks could could easily go south, right? Because you have that, what's ADHD? ADHD is the body's inability to create dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline at normal levels. And so you're constantly, your brain's constantly looking for those those chemicals. And fortunately, I get them, like I said, through, through positive sources, exercise, and I'm a licensed skydiver, and I do Ironman triathlons and public speaking. But, you know, it doesn't take much to get those same chemicals through like one or two drinks, which then could lead... Well, wow, you know, it's closing time, but I still, I'm still enjoying this. I want to keep it going, you know, or being in Vegas, right? I, when I go to Vegas, I have a rider in my contract that says I don't have to be on the ground for more than eight hours, right? So I'll fly in, I'll give a speech at noon, I'll fly back out because I don't, not that I'm going to do anything stupid, probably won't, but why give myself the opportunity, right? 12 hours, if I give a morning or an evening speech, it means I have to stay overnight at some point. And that's 12 hours in Vegas. Nothing good is going to come out of my 12 hours in Vegas unsupervised. So why just, why not just not let it happen? Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, and I think those processes are important. Uh, I heard another one. What, what was the one I heard about, uh, gym clothes? Yeah. I sleep in my gym clothes. So again, you want to be able to create, to, to prevent, to prevent having to do things. Um, you know, if I'm, if I wake up at four in the morning, and I don't necessarily want to wake up. Well, it's pretty easy to go back to sleep. So I sleep in my gym clothes. What happens when I sleep in my gym clothes? I sleep in my gym clothes and then I'm not going back to sleep. Right, it's pretty hard to sleep, and you go back to sleep, and you're in your gym clothes, and the lights come on already automatically, and you're up. Right, so you know the second you hit that snooze bar, you're already delaying your day. So I, I don't do that. I just I, I do things that allow me to make sure that I get it done. Yeah, I, I love I love life hacks like life hacks like that, um, and some of our best guests have, have had those as well. So if you could pinpoint or call out sort of the one thing that keeps you motivated, you know, pushes you into a new endeavor, you don't slip into Netflix. Um, or Game of Thrones, you know, what would that be? Is it, is it curiosity? You know, you got to have moments where you do take time to enjoy yourself. But on the flip side, um, you know, I like to work to the way I work and working the way I work makes it very easy to continue that process. You know, I like doing things that excite me. Uh, uh, Seth Godin says that, um, forward movement is thrilling. I believe that. So I like to sort of push myself forward like that. All right, and one of one of my favorite ways that that I I've learned about um, you doing that is you ask four four simple words. How can I help? Yeah. Um, how, how did you arrive at those four words, and what impact have they had on your life? You know, we I'm of the belief that you have to ask um, you have to ask yourself you have to put out ten times the amount of help into the universe that you ask for. And so, if I ask for anything, I want to make sure that I. Uh, and helping people as much. So for me, I'm a big fan of um, help. I just think it's a good thing to do. It's a, it's it's beneficial in terms of um, uh, in terms of karma in the universe. And plus, if you're helping people, you become that guy who helps people, and everyone likes that, right? Everyone wants to know who you are, and so it's, it's a win win all around. So for me, it's really about doing that. I love it. So what? So tell us a little bit more about your new book. Uh, obviously, people can check out the podcast now. Okay. When when is the book going to be available, and what what can people expect from it? The book comes out um, on October third, and the podcast and the book are the basic premise is that ADHD is a gift, and if you understand how to use it to your advantage, it can help you build businesses, it can help you live better lives, it can do 
pretty much make you millionaires. Uh, you know, having that faster brain is the greatest thing that could possibly happen. And um, we need to change the conversation around the concept of it's a gift. It's not a curse. And, you know, we're, we're, we're freaking out because our five-year-olds are getting diagnosed with ADHD because they're acting like, oh, I don't know, because they're acting like they're fucking five. And maybe if we just... <laughs> Put them, you know, instead of putting them on Adderall or, or methamphetamines, maybe we sit them down, give them some protein instead of three bowls of chocolate sugar bombs, and, and instead of putting them, instead of putting them in front of the TV for three hours, you know, maybe let them run around for an hour before school. We'd be amazed at what can happen. So we need to change the concept of the pharmaceutical companies running this game. We need, really need to. That's such a great message. Um, all right. Well, we're going to jump to the ambition today question of the day. If you want to submit your question uh, for future episodes, you can go to syscar.co and submit those questions. Uh, today's question of the day is, how do you think about attention management and how do you best optimize your life for it? I understand the concept that airplane mode is not just for when you're on an airplane. For me, it is very important to make sure that I do the right things to keep myself going. So I schedule meetings once a week and it's an entire day of meetings and I know that I'm gonna be in meetings that day and I'm not gonna get productivity done that day. That's fine, that's my meeting day. Other days, I don't have them. I am sitting in an office or somewhere where I am not bothered, I can work. My last uh, three books, including two bestsellers, have been written entirely on, or three bestsellers, have been written entirely on airplanes. I will book a flight to go write a, to, to, to go write a book because I don't even have to go anywhere. I get on the plane, fly for 14 hours, turn around and come home, but that's my happy place. That's my zone of focus. <laughs> We have to have that. That's amazing. I, uh, I I'm I'm from Buffalo, live in New York City, and I take the Amtrak quite quite often. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I hear you completely. It's when I get the most work done. No distractions. Totally. No question about it. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, for listening today. Uh, the show notes, which include everything from this episode, including links that we talked about, are up on the website syscar.co. Share this episode wherever you want online: Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, iMessage, Snapchat. You get the point. Tag both me and Peter in it and we'll happily join in on the conversation. If you love Ambition Today, then think about joining the show's back channel. It's full of exclusive access reserved for the best fans of the show, which is why we only mention it at the end. Uh, and thank you for listening. Uh, it includes a bonus segment from each episode. Uh, so if you join today, you can hear the single best piece of advice Peter has ever received. So with that, uh, Peter, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to, to chat today. Where can people go find out more about you, or is there anything else we should be checking out? Yeah, fastthanormal.com is the podcast. My life is at shankman.com, and I'm at Peter Shankman on all the socials. All right, awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. Stay curious, everyone, and I will see you on the next episode of Ambition Today. Thanks for listening to Ambition Today. Be sure to visit syscar.co to get all the information from this episode and more great content. Until next time, stay curious, everyone.